one of your blog posts, you said uh, it's much more important to have a compass than have the map, yeah. which I found to be very predictive. So on that, and we talked about the entrepreneur, uh, and his ability to, 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 to be agile and adapt. What are you think the most important traits you look at an entrepreneur when you want to invest or support him? So, so it's, there's an interesting balance between focus and um, peripheral vision. So, 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 so for instance, um, there's a study that was done and they collected people who thought they were very lucky and they collected people they thought they were very unlucky and they put them in a room and gave them a newspaper and said count the number of pictures in the newspaper and then in big headlines said, if you see this, you get $250, $250 if you tell the examiner. Another one says, there are 42 pictures in this newspaper. All the lucky people read it. They go, give me 250 bucks, I'm done, 42 pictures. And all the unlucky people are like looking and they're counting the pictures. And so luck is whether you're looking for the opportunity around you. If you have a, a dot on a screen and you put the pictures around the edge, you see the peripheral. If you say, I'll give you $10 to watch the dot, they can't see it anymore the peripheral. And so when we talk about businesses, we also always talk about execution and focus. But execution and focus means putting your blinders on, which is important when you kind of are doing the sprint. But then you have to be able to look up and say, wait, this isn't working. Hey, I, and oh, Habib, because so, the problem is when we're having these mixing meetings and you talk to um, Fadi and he's talking about logistics and you're in the bakery business, if you're not looking, you'll miss that opportunity to say, hey, wait a second, maybe there's a way for me to work with a brush. And, and the ability to... Armex. Uh, uh, Armex. <laughs> but he's also a brush. Uh, is, is to unfocus, to look for the peripheral opportunity, but to focus when you need to be driving your car. It's, and it's also for risk as well. Um, what do you think about MBAs for entrepreneurship, for entrepreneurs, basically? M so so if, somebody has an MBA, MBA, if somebody has an MBA, they have to explain to me why the hell they ha got the MBA. Okay, Muhammad, or, or explain. <laughs> Muhammad, right. uh, that, was a trick, that was a question leading to you. Explain why the hell you have an MBA. And why did you go to McKinsey? Yeah, exactly. Well, before. That's the other one. Management, consulting, and MBAs are two things they have to explain before I'll ever invest. Okay, so we have Muhammad, who's, we have Muhammad here next to you who's actually running one of the, of the most successful startups here, an MBA and a McKinsey guy. Tell us why did you do that and sure. how did you take yourself away from that? Just break the stereotypes for us. Yeah, so I mean for me it was a very uh, deliberate decision to go back to get the, to get the MBA. Um, and it was in order to put me in, within Silicon Valley. So I, I specifically, the only place I really wanted to go was to get into, integrated into the ecosystem. And so I went to Stanford. And, uh, and during my time there, I fully focused on pivoting my, my career and my background to uh, understand better the, the venture capital market, understand better what startups do, uh, how to be successful. Uh, I took the, the summer between my first and second year to work at a startup that was actually running in the, in, in the valley. And that is uh, actually that MBA experience, that two-year experience is what solidified my passion for the future in being more of an entrepreneur and in, in, in being in this, uh, in this system. So there, that's, the, that's kind of the reason behind the, uh, the MBA. Yeah. Yeah, and then, McK uh, yeah, okay, so then, then, then I have a double strike. So then coming out here to the region though, um, honestly it was, it was a, a, it was my first time working in, in the region. So I'm Iraqi uh, American and had grown up and lived in the, uh, in the US basically. And and I knew that I, I wanted to better understand what it was like to actually work uh, within the region. And so the McKinsey experience gave me on the ground uh, six months, for instance, working in Saudi, working at a client in Jeddah and Riyadh and f commuting there, understanding the challenges of what is it like to actually s almost live there in, in this market, right? And seeing these things firsthand uh, and then also understanding what are the needs, what does the market actually require instead of coming from the outside and, and, and hypothesizing, spending some time here and actually getting a sense of the market before jumping into, uh, into a play. And can I just, so that's a good answer, so, but let me just explain why, 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 why me and all of the VCs that I work with give you a black mark. Usually, traditionally, people get MBAs if they want to make as much money as quickly as possible without doing any work. And that, that, that's kind of like, statistically, that's, I think, relatively true. And there are always exceptions. And management consultants are often people who want to make the most money they can with taking no risk. 
personal risk. And so those are two negatives for entrepreneurs. Yeah, for sure. So, for so, sure. so that's why we asked. But, but that, but you were tactical, so that's a good answer. No, yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree with your. No, I agree with your. your and, and and that was actually a deliberate choice then to just jump out of the the management consulting world because it did feel so. It's so structured. It's so safe, and it's so kind of on this path. It's quite frankly, for me, it was it was getting to a point where it's, it's going to be boring and leading to a, a certain you know end result, which wasn't me, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and three of you took the, the same jump. Three of you co-founders who are MBAs and consulting management, two. more or less. Two, two of you. Okay, yeah, two. two. Which Lewis is right here, by the way. Yes. Harvard MBA, McKinsey. <laughs> but but uh, but but also same passion. <laughs> Who's the next entrepreneur? He was a consultant now, ex-consultant in the room. Nobody's gonna raise it. Oh wow! All right. Okay. No. 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 No clap. Who quit? Who quit consulting? Okay. Now you can clap. Now you can clap. <laughs> Okay, it's not that, I mean, honestly, that experience is a positive one because it gives you the view of uh, in, in an early ecosystem like this one, it's a positive one. So, so oh, I would say, I, 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 I'm in total agreement with what Mohammed says. The Arab world is such a difficult place to, to do business in, and the exposure that uh, the McKinsey's and others in the, of the world get access to, to these markets because governments open doors for them. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to go to Saudi Arabia, good luck. So these guys know the Saudi market, know the ecosystem. Well, although there. Saudi least, Arabia is ranked number eight that, in doing business. Uh -huh. It's ranked number eight in doing business. Yes. So that business. tells you, uh, well, I'm not going to comment yeah, because yeah, the Saudi Arabia is my largest market. So let's. 